In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a couple of tools which will make your life a lot easier as a C programmer. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is GDB, which is the GNU debugger. Uh, and the second one I'm going to show you is Valgrind. So, first of all, GDB. GDB is a program which lets you step through the program that you're writing line by line and see what it's doing. And you can set breakpoints, which are particular locations in your code at which you want it to stop. And then when it gets to that point, uh, you get a command prompt where you can type in various commands to examine the state of your program. What I'm going to use to demonstrate uh, GDB is uh, my solution to Prac 1 from the Operating Systems course. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is I need to compile this program. Now, when you uh, want to use GDB with your program, you need to pass the dash G flag to GCC. And what that means is include debugging information. And then I always pass dash wall to show any warnings. And then the output file name and the source file. Okay, so that's produced uh, the executable file. So now to use that with GDB, I first go into GDB and then I give the name of the file that I want to debug. Now, if I was to uh, start running the program now, I can use the run command, and then I give it um, the uh, arguments that I would normally give the, the program. So, for example, path1 and path2 will compare the directories path1 and path2. Now, that will run the program as normally, uh, and then the program exits, okay? So, so far, it's nothing different from running a program normally from the Unix command line. So, one of the things I can do in GDB is I can set a breakpoint, and I can say that I want you to stop the program when it gets to this particular location. I can set a breakpoint on either a function or a particular line of code. So to start with, I'll uh, set a breakpoint on main. And I do that with the break command. So I say break main. Okay, so this shows me that it's, it's set a breakpoint number one at this location, which corresponds to the main function. So now I will run this again. Okay, so it's got the first. It's got to the first line of main which is where it checks that the number of arguments uh, is uh, at least three. So <clears throat> now that I've stopped at this, at this point, uh, I can do several things. One of the things I can do is I can actually inspect the values of variables in my program. And I can do that using the print command. So if I type print argc, that will tell me what the value of argc is. Uh, I can also print out uh, argv0, and that will tell me what the first command line parameter is, which is always the name of the program. Similarly, I can do print argv1, print argv2, and so forth. And I can even evaluate simple expressions. So I can say print argc less than 3, and that will return the result of that expression, which is 0 meaning false. So currently, the location in the program is line 194 of compare.c. So this has shown me this line of code before it's executed. Now, if I want to execute that line, what I do is I type next. So that will evaluate the expression in the if statement, and it will say it's false. So it will skip past the if statement onto the next line. So here, this is just about to evaluate path 1 is equal to argv1. If I print out path 1 at the moment, that will just have some random value because it hasn't been initialized yet. So now if I run that line of code, that will be executed. And now I'll do print path 1 again, and we'll see that's been set to the, uh, the value argv1, which in this case happens to be the same as the variable, but um, that could be any string that I pass. So similarly with path 2, I can run that instruction or that uh, line of code, and then that's initialized path two. Okay, so I can set through lines in a function by typing next, 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 and so forth. But when we get to a function call, uh, I've got two choices. If I were to 
uh, type next here, then what that would do is it would run the compare function to completion, and then when that function returns, it would go back to the GDB prompt. But I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to go inside the compare function and have a look at all the things that's at, that that is doing. So in order to do that, I use the step command. Okay, so we'll see that this is taken to us to compare.c line 171. So we can look at that in Emacs. You press Alt-G, Alt-G, and then you type in the line number, and then that will take you to that location in the code. And in this particular case, it's about to make a call to the stat function. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to go inside the stat function because that's a system call. What I just want to do is I want to execute that and then go on to the next part. So I can type next, next, uh, next, 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 and, and so forth, right? Uh, you can also use N as a abbreviation for uh, next and similarly S as a abbreviation for step. So for example, if I want to step inside this compare does function, then I can just type S, which is the same as step, and then I'm inside this compare does function and I continue going through like that. So this will let you step through your program line by line and at any point you can print out values of variables. So for example, print count one. There's also an abbreviation for that. You can do p count one, p meaning print. Okay, uh, and then when you're finished, you can type quit to exit the program. Now I'm going to show you how to run GDB with, in Emacs as well, because this is actually uh, a nicer way to use it. Uh, so in Emacs, uh, first thing I want to do, I want to bring up GDB in the bottom window and have GDB in the top window. So under Emacs, if you press Control X and then 2, that will split the window in half. And then you can uh, switch between these as you like. Uh, and if you press Control X and then 1, that will take it back to a single pane. So I want to split this in two. I'll do Control X2. And then in the bottom window, I will type Alt X and then GDB. Okay, and then it will say, how do you want to run GDB? I just say GDB, and then I press Enter. Okay, so uh, this has, uh, so this is loaded GDB, but I need to load the file that I want to do, uh, debug. So I type file, compare, and that tells GDB to load the, uh, the debugging symbols there. So now I can do what I did before, which is set a breakpoint in main. I can type break main, or I can just type B main. B is an abbreviation for break. Okay, so I've set that. Now I will run the program. And I can type R as an abbreviation for run. And it will see that that has uh, highlighted, it is um, at breakpoint one. Now, what is supposed to be happening here is this should be actually uh, showing the, um, highlighting the lines of code down here, but it's not. And I think the reason for that is I've actually run GDB in the incorrect way. So uh, the way that you should run it is the default uh, way that Emacs suggests, which is with dash dash annotate equals one. And that will tell GDB to highlight the lines of code in Emacs. Okay, so now I'll load file prepare. Set a breakpoint in main. And run with path 1 and path 2. Okay, so now you can see, uh, you might not be able to see it very well in the video, there's actually a little arrow down there, which shows on the left, which shows where we are in the code. So if I step through this, you will see that arrow uh, is moving. So that's that's just sitting down there, and that shows you the current line of code that is uh, active. So I can say next, and I want to step into this function. So I can say step, and similarly, I can step through this code here. Okay. So that just makes it a little bit easier. Um, I think on Linux. When, if you're using Emacs on Linux, it will actually highlight the whole line in a, in a different color. I'm not sure why it's not doing this on the, on the Mac here. But anyway, so you can step through your code like that.
and similarly Q, this is the program. Okay, 